everyone, today's video is going to be one of five videos that I'm going to be uploading over the next week where I live off one pound a day for five days. Now I feel like I've been planning on filming this video for maybe four or five years now. I think it was back in 2015 time that I first saw them and I know that since then there's been quite a few kind of YouTube challenge videos where people live off one pound a day. Now this live below the line challenge I believe was started by The Hunger Project although correct me if I'm wrong but they basically challenge people to live off one pound a day for five days as part of like a fundraising activity but also just to raise awareness of world poverty so i'm going to leave a bunch of resources down in the description to provide kind of more information there but obviously i just thought this was a really good opportunity to raise some awareness i think they say that there's 820 million people currently living below the poverty line and within the UK, it's one in five people are considered to be in poverty, which is absolutely crazy. And I think especially with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, and the fact that there's a global pandemic, that's obviously going to be impacting poorer communities. So the work that the Hunger Project are doing is really good. It's kind of very community led. Their focus is on empowering people and kind of having a sustainable approach to ending world hunger. So they're looking to end extreme hunger by 2030. And I will leave again, a bunch of stuff in the description that provides kind of more context there but I'm basically going to be living off one pound a day or five pounds for the next five days just to give like a quick disclaimer this is only looking at the food that I'm going to be eating obviously I'm going to be spending money in other ways I mean the fact that I'm in a house right now is money running water hot water to wash in etc electricity all those things kind of not taken into account with this challenge which i feel like is really important to say because this is just a very small taste i guess of what people go through when they're living below the line and i'm very aware of kind of all the other privileges i have while doing this challenge so yeah this is kind of just looking at the food aspects but i think it's still going to be very much a challenge I have been shopping this morning and picked up everything and I think I've managed to get it in five pounds so I'm going to start this video by sharing with you guys what I've picked up for the next five days and then the next few videos will be showing what I'm eating and how I'm finding the challenge. I also thought that this video would be not only kind of a good opportunity to raise awareness but I thought well one it would be well I don't want to say fun challenge because I don't think this is going to be fun but a good opportunity to challenge myself to do something different. I am very much a budget shopper anyway, I'm not a big fan of spending money so for the most part I eat pretty affordably, obviously not to this extreme but for me this is kind of a good challenge to have to try and fit my meals for five days within that budget. And I think as well, I know that a lot of you guys follow me from my university content and kind of eating cheaply as a student. So obviously, again, this is a very extreme example, but maybe it could give you guys a little bit of inspo of where you can find some more affordable foods or some more affordable meal ideas. But yeah, that is what these videos are going to be. Also from this, I'm going to start making some more kind of budget friendly meal idea videos. I have a couple on my channel already, but obviously if you guys are students or you're like me and you just want to live as cheap as possible then hopefully they can give you some more inspo as well but yeah for the next five days i'm not going to be eating anything too exciting especially once i've shown you guys my shopping you'll see why it's going to be very repetitive and i feel like i'm going to get bored of it quickly but that is just the reality of this challenge so i'm going to show you guys what i picked up today so to start with i actually went to three different places for my shopping which i never do i'm not someone normally who shops around i prefer to just go to one place and get it all sorted but obviously with trying to find the cheapest things i figured it made most sense to go to different places to find those so i looked online at asda first i put together like a shopping list of the things i was looking to get and then i popped a little before i popped to asda to see if i could get anything from there that would be cheaper than i'd got on my list from asda so to start with the things i picked up from lidl i got this loaf of white sliced bread this was 40p so i think the one in asda was like 46p so it saved myself six pence with this loaf of bread and it's literally just sliced white bread i was initially planning on picking up some brown bread but little didn't have any in stock so i figured i would get white bread instead obviously the nutritional value of both i think slightly differs but I don't mind having white bread. Honestly, this is actually quite a treat for me because I never buy a loaf of bread because I can never get through it quick enough. And obviously I'm gonna be eating a lot of it over the next five days. So it's actually an opportunity to eat a lot of bread, which 
I'm not really complaining about at this point. So that was 40p. The next thing I picked up was a can of baked beans. These were 29p. And again, I think Asda's were maybe 30 or 31. So not the biggest difference, but in this challenge, every penny counts. So I picked these up. I figured I could have a couple of lunches of beans on toast. So that is why I grabbed those. Also with the things I was choosing, I really tried to find things which had high calories because obviously you want to still eat enough food during the day and also a little bit of nutrition. So I tried to find things where I could get some protein, get some vitamins, etc. Obviously it's not going to be ideal, but when I kind of share with you guys what I'm eating each day, I'm going to break down the nutritional value of everything as well, just so you can kind of get an idea of the things that I'm eating. I have no idea at this point. I'm hoping I found some sort of balance with the budget that I had, but I will see once I've like plugged that all in actually what I've ended up eating. But yeah, I picked up those baked beans. I also got some spaghetti. This was 20p and it's also 20p in Asda, so I could have got it there as well. This is going to be my dinner, I think, most evenings. Again, not going to complain at this at all because I'm a big pasta fan and I normally get the 20p Asda spaghetti anyway, so I don't think this is going to be any different to normal spaghetti, but I picked that up. I then picked up some soy milk and this was 59p. When I first started thinking about the things I wanted to get for this challenge, I did not think about getting milk. The only thing I really need this for is my breakfasts. I've picked up some oats to have a porridge every morning and I know that you can make porridge with water so I figured this would be a good place to save some money because I don't need the milk. But then when I thought about it a little bit more, this is sweetened soy milk so obviously it adds that little bit of flavour to the oats. I feel like plain porridge would be so unbearable, like I have to put some sort of sugar or jam or syrup on my porridge every morning so this is going to help the flavor out a little bit because obviously i still want to eat foods that i can actually stomach every morning so this is going to help the porridge out and then as well it's fortified with various like vitamins and things so i can actually get some calcium and vitamins from this as well so i figured from like a nutrition standpoint it would be wise to pick this up and it was only 59p so that is why I grabbed that. I then picked up some vegetable stock cubes and I feel like again these are not necessarily a necessity. I definitely could go without them but I really want to eat foods that I somewhat find tasty. I don't want to be eating bland food for the next five days and I figured these are such an easy way just to add a bit of flavour to meals. I am planning on making some soup and I just figured soup without any sort of salt or seasoning was just going to be so unbearable that i felt like i had to pick these up so these are 36p and obviously i'm not going to use the whole 12 over the next five days but with everything i've counted it as if i'm eating everything over the next five days if that makes sense i feel like there's different ways of doing this challenge because when i looked at a meal plan on the hunger project website they were kind of working it out as if they'd bought everything and then they were just kind of summing up the parts that they'd used of all of the ingredients so like 10 peas worth of oil or five peas worth of spices and i didn't really want to do it like that because obviously you have to still buy all of those ingredients to make those meals and if you're really kind of living below the line you wouldn't necessarily have that spare money to kind of buy those more expensive ingredients just to use part of it in one meal if that makes sense so that's why i've gone for the most part and getting ingredients that i will kind of use all up and even if I'm not going to use it all up, I've still included all of it in the final price. And then the final thing I picked up from Lidl were these frozen veg, which have been defrosting on my floor and are now very wet. These were 79p and it comes with beans, peas, sweet corn and carrots. Now I have some sort of like aversion to these for some reason. I'm not sure why, I just think this sort of style of frozen veg tastes different. I don't know if it's just me. Leave a comment down below if you know what I mean. I just don't think this tastes like vegetables, which I know sounds crazy. And it's not because it's frozen, because I do find other veg that's frozen tastes good. For some reason, not the biggest fan of this, but this was the cheapest option. And I really want to be eating some sort of vegetable over the next five days. And I thought this would be the best way to get some variety. So I'm going to be putting this in my soup. And when I have pasta and things, I'll boil some of this up. So 
I'm hoping when it's mixed in with things, I won't be able to tell that it tastes different and I might enjoy it. I might be judging too early, but this is what I've picked up vegetable wise. And then from Asda, I also picked up a few things. So I've got these porridge oats, like I already mentioned, I'm gonna be having porridge, I think for breakfast most days. These were 75p. And again, these are what I normally buy anyway. So I don't think there's gonna be any issue there with these. I also thought I could be a little bit creative with them and maybe make some other meals out of oats. I know you can blend them up to make flour and you can make cookies and stuff with them. So I might try and be a little bit more experimental with these oats over the next few days and see what I can come up with. I then picked up some peanut butter. This was 70p. This is just like the Asda Smart Price peanut butter. And again, don't have any issues with this. I've picked this up in the past. The peanut butter that I have at the moment is like a 100% peanuts one. This is 88 and it's got things like oils and sugar and salt in. But I feel like during these five days, I'm gonna appreciate that oil and salt and sugar. So this is what I picked up for some protein and some fats. This is obviously quite calorie dense. So I figured it'd be a good way to fill me up gonna put some of this on my porridge in the morning and I can have like peanut butter on toast and things as snacks as well. I then got some pasta sauce, this was 39p. This was surprisingly much cheaper, well I say much cheaper, like 10p cheaper in Asda than it was in Lidl, which surprised me because I feel like Lidl is known for being like the cheapest of the cheap, but found this in Asda for 10p cheaper and it's just like a bolognese sauce. It hasn't got meat in or anything like that, it's basically just a tomato pasta sauce, so this is going to be my pasta sauce every evening when I have pasta and I did think as well I might attempt to make a pizza with the oats as like the base and then I could use this as like the pizza topping with some of the vegetables so that might happen at some point but yeah I just picked this up mostly for my pastas and then the final thing I picked up was these butter beans this was 36p and I figured I could add this to the soup that I'm planning on making to bulk it out a little bit as well as having some extra protein. I think if I had a little bit more money, I would have bought two cans of these because I know you can like mash them up and make kind of like spreads for toast and stuff with them. So I feel like that could be quite interesting. Maybe I'll hold a few of them back when I make the soup to try and make some sort of spread or dip because I feel like that mixed with some stock cube could potentially work I don't know it might be gross but yeah that was the last thing that I picked up in Asda and then the last things that I picked up were two bananas and these were from a little market stall in town so I got like a whole bowl of bananas for a pound and there were 10 in there so I'm counting these as 10p each I did intend to pick these up from the supermarket but the ones they had in both Lidl and Asda were so green that I knew I wouldn't be able to eat them over the next five days because I like my bananas much riper and these look semi-decent so that's why I got them from the market stall as well. I figured 10p per banana is probably pretty standard across supermarkets so that seems like a fair price and it takes the total up to five pounds and three pence I think. So technically 3p over but when you divide that per day it's like one pound and then not even a penny it's like 0.06 or something so one pound one penny a day technically over but I feel like I'm gonna let it slide especially because I did get things like the stock cubes where I'm not gonna use all of it up so that is my final haul of everything that I'm gonna be eating over the next five days it is actually already 5 p.m I think on day one this morning for breakfast, I just had plain porridge because like I already mentioned, I have those Asda oats at home anyway. So I figured that would be the easiest thing to eat. And I literally just had it with water and it was not enjoyable. <laughs> but that was my breakfast because I really didn't want to go shopping hungry. And I've not eaten lunch yet. So I'm going to make myself some beans on toast, I think. And that's going to be my very late lunch. And then I'll also show you guys what I'm having for dinner this evening. I am definitely not complaining about this being my first lunch of the challenge. Might not be the most exciting thing, but I am a big fan of beans on toast. Normally I would have a whole bunch of butter on the toast and some Marmite and on top of the beans I would put cheese and black pepper. But for a simple lunch, I feel like this is definitely gonna do the job. It is now dinner time and I'm having this super exciting dinner this evening. 
I have used, I think, about a third of the pasta sauce and probably about a quarter of the pasta. I did intend to cook some vegetables to have with this, but to be honest, I'm just not really feeling like vegetables this evening. I just want like a proper comfort meal and I feel like that is what this is. So I'm actually very excited to eat this. So it is officially the end of day one of the challenge. I'm feeling absolutely fine. I don't feel like I have much to report on because all of the meals I ate today were meals I would have on a regular day. I will say that the spaghetti I had for dinner wasn't as good as the Asda 20p one. It was very stodgy and very starchy and I'm normally someone who's like, there's no difference between sorts of pasta, like they all taste the same. Don't know if I just got a bad batch from Lidl and I'm not blaming on the fact that it's 20p because I do get the 20p one from Asda, but it was just, a bit off the texture was a bit weird so it wasn't the best spaghetti i've ever had but it did the job and all of the food i had today like i've already said are just meals that i would have on a regular day i feel like the real challenge with this is just going to be the repetitiveness of meals because i do like to switch up what i eat and i feel like by days like four and five I will be struggling a lot more but today I feel fine. I do think I could potentially be getting ill because my appetite wasn't very big today which I mean helped me out because I didn't feel like snacking but it would not be ideal if I am getting ill. I'm hoping it's just because I ate loads yesterday and my body's just trying to balance it out a little bit. I don't know we will see but that is the end of day one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with day two. Bye!